the oldest customer experience organization in the world. We're 30 leading experts. Uh, we've, done work, uh, we've done work for the world's biggest banks, uh, every bank in the UK, and if you can be bothered to visit our website, you'll see a list of uh, the 7,500 engagements we've had over time. And I've got one of the best jobs in the world because what I do is I travel around the world, I talk about customer experience, um, and, um, and I help people make change. And, uh, and when Jonathan Sheridan and I came up with this title, The Universal Agent, um, it, 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 it's the culmination of a journey that I've been on for, for the last, I guess, three years. And I'm going to share with you some background, I'm going to share with you some information, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you six tests that you can use back at base to have a more serious conversation about the future of your contact strategy and the future of contact technology. So hopefully I'm going to perform a bit of a magic trick for you. Uh, let's start out with just a, a piece, your customer. Your customer now lives connected to this device. Yeah, it's always on, it's always available, unless it's my kids, of course, and, and I'm trying to find out what they're doing and why they're spending my money. But in general terms, we are on an always on, we're in an always on society. That's the way it works. And there's one figure on this I just want everyone to think about for a second. 2011, according to, uh, was it still called Ofcom then? I forgot, you know, I am getting old. 20% um, of, uh, 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 of uh, people had smartphones in the United Kingdom. Okay, 2015, their report says 70%. Yeah. 70% of the people who contact us have smartphones. And the interesting thing is that the sale of landlines has virtually disappeared. Yeah. Now, I want you to bear that in mind because some of the challenges that I'm going to give you to take back to the office are going to be about, okay, well, if that's what's happened over the last three, four years, how are we making the most of it? What are we doing to use that? And that's very important. But let me just... Um, I'm going to give you some basic stuff about customer experience. Please don't worry about reading everything on the slides. The slide deck will be available after the event if you've asked Sheridan. Uh, it's designed to give you stuff to take home. Yeah, so let's talk first of all about what customer experience is. Customer experience is about delivering appropriate contact. And I use the word appropriate not as, uh, a, 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 as, a, as a mere random choice in the English language, but as a word that you need as a standard. When I walk up to the ATM, if the ATM works, I'm going to forget my experience. Yeah? As long as everything's fine, I'm going to forget about it. I don't remember the last time I went to the ATM. No, I just remember the last time the kids took the money. But, uh, but exactly when and where I was, I, I don't remember that. And that's because it worked. Automated is appropriate in certain circumstances. And then if you tie that to what Jonathan was talking about, if I went to the ATM and I didn't have any money in my bank, and I thought I had money in my bank, I'd want to talk to somebody right now. Uh, not in five minutes, not after you've given me a, 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 a lovely message that tells me you're the world's best banking organisation, not uh, after three or four minutes of choices that have nothing to do with my problem. I want to talk to someone now. Because apparently my world's just collapsed. Apparently I'm now in a highly emotional state. And I'm going to come back to emotional states in a little while. But it's this whole question of what's appropriate. So sometimes self-service is the thing. We all made the self-service bargain because none of us wanted to queue in the banks anymore. There are hundreds of self-service bargains that we've made as consumers. Yeah? How do we leverage that successfully without feeling like Big Brother? 
How do we give customers the choice? And some of the things that I'm going to talk about as we go through just will highlight some of the ways in which customers have, have made choices over the last few years. So um, it covers everything. Customer experience is delivered by your whole organization. Uh, you may not think so, but every part of your organization is involved in some way or other. Okay, figuring out how, that's a bit of a challenge. All right, but it may well be that the person in the HR department who fails to smile at all the employees that they meet during the day has a ripple effect on someone in a call center who's talking to an angry customer. If you think that is specious, it isn't. Uh, the guy who sets the pricing sets the tone of your customer experience. He may never meet a customer in his life. Yeah, and there are thousands of people in, in organizations who never get to directly interact with the customer, but who are part of how the, how the customer experience is built. Yeah. And in order to work in this new world, you need to have a different understanding of business cases. I'm going to talk about that briefly. But let's talk about some of the big things, some of the holes that we fall down. So the first one's got to be the customer. The second one's going to be silos, uh, I see a few worried faces there, and then the third one's going to be islands of technology, and, and based on, on job titles and stuff, hopefully this is going to be uh, relevant to all you guys. So, I hope to convince you that the agents in your call centre today are probably bringing a knife to a gunfight. They're probably not as well informed, probably not as well tooled up, probably not as effective as they are the second they walk out of your office. And that's an issue. That's a real challenge. And I hope to get you to think about that in, in, in a practical way. Yeah. Just who's in charge now whether or not we're still in control of the customers or the customers are in, in charge of us, that's the question that your organization probably isn't asking enough about and not looking at, 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 at effectively. In 2010, 2011, something fundamental changed. Okay, and it was the arrival of this thing, customer power. Consumer technology now outpaces business technology in terms of spend, in terms of innovation, at a pace that is in factors, not in percentages. Uh, let me try and explain that to you really simply. We in business, wonderful as we are, we spend tens of billions of pounds on innovation today. But if you look at what's being spent on consumer technology innovation today, it's tens of trillions. And that's why we have Usain Bolt there. In under 10 seconds, Mr. Bolt, I believe, can run 100 meters or whatever it is, and it's 9.7 or 9 point something, I, I, I forget the exact number. And he's us. He's lean, he's Six Sigma, he's the whole nine yards, we're focused, we're there, we're absolutely in it. Customer never does any exercise, but they're in, a, I forget what car we got, they're in a Bugatti Veyron. Yeah, 10 seconds takes them to 100 miles an hour. We were behind the customer from about 2010, 2011, from the time that you all first remember your first consumer phone being better than the phone that they gave you at work. Right? To the age where we're all using our own technology now, you know, bring your own device and all of that stuff, that's when it changed. Okay, and meanwhile, the customer has been driving away from us at such a pace of speed 
we're not, we haven't even noticed that they've left and they're somewhere else. That's how far up the challenge it is. And there's another thing. Amazon UK has a hundred million products. Now I know all of you work really hard and are all very, very busy, so you won't have noticed, unless you're, you're in food as a, a, a business, that the supermarkets are struggling somewhat to make a profit at the moment. Uh, we've seen forecasts and results and uh, the entire supermarket industry apparently has completely got it wrong. Well, that's not actually what's happened, but two things have happened. The first is customer behavior is changing more quickly than our strategies can catch up with them and our deliverables can be put there. So the average project in IT I guess now you'd say maybe it's 18 months, two years, used to be three years. Yeah, sound about right? Okay, consumers, consumer behavior is changing in months. Yeah, consumer behavior is changing in weeks. Uh, and we're unable to keep up with this. So the first thing that's happened to uh, the supermarkets is that their strategies have not kept up with the way in which consumers are behaving. The second is, if they, can offer, if they can offer all of the other services that there are, like broadband, mobile, anyone here on a Tesco mobile, anyone here on a, say, I don't know if there's a Sainsbury's mobile, I'm reaching a bit there, but you, you get the idea, you know, the, the broadband services, all these other services, if they're being delivered by other people, where's margin? Where is that? Where is that opportunity today? And that's only one of the challenges that we face. Customers are more adaptive than we are. Okay, a a a anyone here sent a text today? Okay, a anyone here sent a text in the last week? Um, received a phone call? Um, how many of your organizations support phone and text as part of a single integrated experience. Okay, well, your customers do. Yeah. And Facebook and Google Plus and Uncle Tom Cobbley and all. And I'm going to be coming back to that because that's kind of important. Yeah. We are so far behind and we're so slow and we can't keep up, but recognizing where we are means that we can in some ways keep pace and make the most of the opportunity. And there's a, a, there's a difference, yeah? And here's one of our biggest challenges, the silo. Okay, there's a fair number of call centre people here. I suspect the website's probably owned by marketing or a different department. I suspect social media is probably owned by somebody else. I suspect that um, if there's an app, it's owned by another group, with the exception of obviously some organizations who I'm sure have it absolutely perfectly right. But, you know, there are silos. Yeah, and these silos make it really difficult for us to deliver a single experience. Because I don't think of my service provider for my mobile phone as there's the sales department, there's the customer service department, there's the support department. I just think of them as one company. Yeah, so if the experience is different across all of those silos, well, first of all, that doesn't sound very efficient to me. And secondly, that doesn't give me a good experience. Yeah. So, Let's talk briefly about the elephant in the room. I just love this photo, I can't help it. I am still a kid. Islands of technology. I want to talk about a couple. The first one I want to talk about is something that Jonathan referred to, which is we're all now becoming more involved in customer experience. Our back office people are now part of our first call resolution strategy. Okay, well you have to ask yourself, what is the difference between your contact centre and what are the barriers between your contact centre and the rest of the organisation? 
And I hope by the time I've finished what, what, what I've got to say, that what you're going to get out of this is some ideas about how you bring these things together. And actually, just for those of you, that was the first system I ever learned to work on. I still remember how to use it. So, what do we really need? We need a single view of the customer. We need a single view of the relationship. <coughs> and we need to be able to deliver that single view together with the business's rules, ideas, around what is the best outcome to an empowered agent who can solve a problem first time, create customer satisfaction, and although that sounds like a, a, a long sentence, that's common sense. And all of the stuff that's in the way of that is the stuff that is slowing you down. There's no magic in customer experience. Customer experience is not a choice versus saving money. Customer experience is not a choice against investing in increased value. Customer experience reduces cost and increases value. Yeah. As the founder of the oldest institution in customer experience, I do not know of one single program that didn't do both. Genuinely. It's about both things. It's about that ability to focus on a single event. So, okay, I'm going to move on. I'm going to talk about uh, some of the things that are changing. Yeah? And the first thing is a single relationship. I don't want to be treated like uh, I, um, yeah, I'm two separate customers. I don't want your different departments to, um, to, to treat me as though we've just started the conversation. I don't want to repeat my mother's maiden name two or three times. Because we're filming, I'm not going to say it, but I don't want to keep repeating my mother's maiden name. Yeah? It's single relationship. It's kind of important to us. The second thing that's changing is this thing called omni-channel. I want to be able to work on a website to try and self-serve myself because I don't really want to talk to someone until I get into trouble. And I don't want to start again when I get on the telephone. I want the agent to join me on the web page I'm working on. Is this beyond our ability as technologists? No. Is it beyond our ability to produce the finance business case? Well, apparently at the moment it is, but maybe some of the things we're going to talk about are going to, uh, are going to change that. And then some of the other things that are changing, security, biometrics. I'm going to talk a little more about that later, but I want to talk about effort. I just want to talk about effort for a second. So a lot of people, how many people here have heard of Customer Effort School? Okay, well done, that's good. <laughs> Uh, customer effort score is kind of um, it, 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 it's kind of the anti uh, the anti version of net promoter score. So net promoter score asks, "Would you recommend me?" And the answer to that is inevitably yes, because it means nothing anymore to, uh, to to any of us. And customer effort score is how easy are we to do business with? Now, in terms of which one's more relevant to me. It's easy, and you know why it's easy? Because people used Facebook because it's easy. YouTube because it's easy. We're all on LinkedIn because it's easy. Yeah? Easy is the new sexy in business. Yeah? Because we want things to be easier. If I, if I wait two minutes while you do something, I'm bored, I'm gone. We look at our telephones 250 times a day. Yeah, that's 250 times while we're doing uh, 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 yeah, other things. I guarantee by the time I finish speaking, at least half of you would have checked something on your phones. Sadly, you know, that's, that's how much old I have on you, but that's another thing. Video. Why can't we engage our customers from our contact centers in video? Did you know that five times as many people around the world use video outside work than in work? And did you know that video-based agreements are twice as likely to be kept to? In other words, if you have a conversation with someone on the telephone and you do a deal, uh, have the same conversation via video and you do a deal, 
People are twice as likely to keep to the video deal. Uh, it amazes me that people get grants to do this kind of research, but they do. Yeah. Social communications. I'm going to stay off the subject of, uh, of social communications, except to say two things. The first is this. If you wanted to find out about me, you could go to Google and you found that you'd find that everything that I've written and done and all, all, that, all, all of that stuff, and all the stuff that I don't want you to find out about my holidays and you know all, all, all of those kind of things. As an organisation, my service provider can't work out that I've got five telephones because I've got two kids. I've got you know I have, I have a complex family. All right. They can't even manage to do the equivalent of a Google search across their organisation. How frustrated do I feel by that? The second is this, if you look at, at Apple's numbers, you'll find that if you boil down into the detail, it appears that they are spending less and less per customer on marketing and on customer service as the years progress. And the reason is that socially, people are putting up YouTubes about how to open the box, how to solve a problem. Customers are helping do customer service. Well, that's a really good thing. We should encourage that. We should use that. That's less things for us. The next thing is digital everywhere. So, I, you know, I said I've got a, a, one of the best jobs in the world. Yeah, I'm building a model of the future call center. I'm building a model of uh, the future house. Uh, we recently did uh, the future of retail, thing, things like that. And basically it is this thing of digital everywhere. It's my device, it's my endpoint, whether it's my Android device, whether it's my iOS device, whatever it is, I own it and you're a really small part of it. So if I own it. If everybody's moving to smart technology, the question for any contact operating organisation has got to be, what have we changed over the last three or four years to take advantage of the fact that now everyone's got smart technology? How are we using this stuff? Okay, and then there's the whole question of really big data. Yeah, understanding patterns of behavior. This stuff is now becoming more accessible. People are actually starting to learn how to use big data properly. Yeah, there's some stuff going on there. Okay, so I'm going to finish off. Six things you can take back to work and ask questions about. All right, here we go. First one. There are four key elements in customer experience auditing. So Jonathan talked about auditing. One of the first things we want to do is we want to work out exactly where you are. Because where you, where you think you are, where your customers think, think you are, pretty much in my experience, tend to be two different places. Yeah, so working it out is kind of important. So there are four key pieces, strategy, mapping, measurement, and adherence. I'll explain them very briefly, okay? Do you have a customer experience strategy? How many people in your organization know what it is? Do your customers know what it is? Is it articulated in such a way that people across the business, understand it and act accordingly. And then of course some really basic things like, is it part of people's um, scorecards? Is it, is it the basis of bonuses? Yeah. You don't need us as rocket scientists to help you ask those questions. Ask those questions. Score your strategy out of 10 based on just those simple things. Yeah? Okay, mapping. Do you really have a complete set of customer journey maps? That's a yes or no. Okay, if you have a complete set of customer journey maps, how many parts to your customer journey maps are there? And divide those by the number of changes that you've had in the last year to your customer journey maps. And the reason that I say that is in case you missed the beginning of my speech, customer behavior is changing. If your mapping isn't changing, there's something wrong. There's a disconnect. Yeah? So score yourself on that. Okay? Measurement. Are you measuring the, 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 the right things? 
it amazes me that so many financial institutions through the world's financial crisis all had, uh, all had customer satisfaction scores, net promoter scores in the high nines, and bear in mind this is a scale out of 10, I had to wonder during the financial crisis whether or not people were asking the questions that they wanted to hear the answers to or the questions that customers wanted answered. So those are very important things. Your view, the internal view, the customer's view, if there isn't a difference between the two, you're doing it wrong, go back and check again. And the last piece of this is adherence. Adherence is how you operate your customer experience. How many times have your business processes, not your customer journey maps, how many times have your business processes changed in the last year? Right? They should have done, should have done a lot. How many identifiable projects have you created that look to blend together your channels? How many projects have you done to take advantage of the fact that our, we're all walking around now with more technology than NASA used to put a man on the moon? What are we doing in terms of that? You don't, you don't need to go through our full detailed process to get a feel for whether or not you want the, where you are today. I mean, obviously, we'd like to talk to you about that and we'd like to help you do this in a more scientific way. Go back and have this conversation. It will give you a feel. Here's the rest of it. Number two. How far ahead are our customers? So, me, I'm on Facebook, Google+, uh, WhatsApp, uh, about 25, 30 different things, but it's my business to learn this stuff. Sit down in a room and get everyone in the room to say what they use as people. Then compare that to the number of channels you support as a business. Uh, that simple. Yeah, what do I do as a person? What do we do as a business? You'll find the gap is huge. Does that make it easier and cheaper for us? No, we're just not doing the finance correctly. Here's the next one. Whoops. How many calls do we close? Is the metric that we all use in call centers. Can we close this case? In the majority of audits that we've done, where we're looking at organizations, the difference between what people think is first call resolution and first call satisfaction are fundamentally different. Uh, my, uh, I had a problem with my mobile device re uh, recently. I spoke to my service provider and, and after the three and a half minutes it takes to get through to anybody while they advertise to me the fact that they do all kinds of other things which really irritates me. Um, what, um, what, 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 what I got to was a situation where they answered my question and the answer was they can't help me. They can't do anything. Yeah? That's not first call resolution but they closed the case. What's the difference between the two? Okay. How many of your call center agents have access to the same information as your customers? And this is where my knife to the gunfight thing comes in. If I want to find out about your organization, I can probably go to a regulator's website, I can definitely go to the newspapers, I can certainly go to social media, and apparently in more than 60% of, um, of, of buying decisions today, Consumers look at other customer feedback. Now, I don't know if it's 50 or 60 or 70%. There's different numbers out there for this, but there is a huge trend towards me finding out about you before I speak to you. Yeah. Has anyone seen the Barclays Digital Eagles thing? Yeah, put it in your shopping basket, says the little old lady, the sweet little old lady and just leave it there and they'll send you an offer on it. That's a little old lady telling me how to be more digitally savvy um, uh, 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 in e-commerce. Yeah? What are you doing to give your agents 
a fair crack of a whip? Are you giving them the same information? Are you allowing them to access the same information? Because that's kind of important. And then finally, are we asking the right questions? Yeah? And what are the right questions? How joined up are our channels? Okay, for a single experience, pick any experience that you deliver as a business process, how many different channels are connected to it? If it's just one, okay, you're behind the curve badly. If it's two or three, you're probably getting there. But really, I have agents, yeah, think, stop thinking of them as, as call center agents, think of them as secret agents, and you want to give them the best tools. If I'm having a conversation with you, I want to be able to text you. I want to be able to respond to the stuff that you send me on WhatsApp. If I'm making a claim about something being broken, I want you to send me the picture and I want to get back into your phone to have the conversation with you around the picture you've just sent me. And ideally, I want to use the measurements that you've taken on your mobile device. I want you and me to work better together because it costs me less, you feel more engaged and more satisfied. These are kind of basic common sense items for people. Yeah. Who here doesn't think that happy agents in a well-organized organization cost less to run? Yeah. Prove it. Yeah. Now think of yourself as a consumer and say, as a consumer, where's my power? Uh, I own the device that you're talking to me on. I own the, the, the data. I own pretty much everything to do with our relationship. You can call me Mr. Customer. Yeah, never mind my first name. Mr. Customer to you. Yeah. This is the world that we're living in. <coughs> These are the things that we want to do. So from a practical point of view, what are the key things? You want to connect all of your channels to your, to your contact center. Okay, whether or not I'm on a website, whether or not I'm using the app, whether, whatever I'm doing, whether I'm walking into your store, whether or not I'm, I, I, I've got a problem, yeah, the contact center should, should have the same skills, the same stuff, access to the same things as the customer. Uh, that just is common sense. Uh, I could prove the maths to you, but I'm running out of time, so you know, I'm not, uh, not going to spend time on that today. All right? But trust me, you can ask us questions later. The maths on this is basic. It's simple. Yeah? You must connect your channels together. Okay, for instance, if I'm sending someone to your home, why am I plugging Google Maps? And if I'm plugging in Google, Google Maps so that you as a customer can see where I am, then that's one less phone call I'm going to make. Okay, but not only that, if I'm able to see that as an agent and you phone me, I can say, okay, he's 10 minutes away. Yeah, but did you know that you can see it yourself and you can keep track of it yourself and we'll be sending you a text in five minutes and in fact, I'm going to text you a link now. That's resolution, that's satisfaction, that's the stuff. Connect everything, yeah? And ask yourself the question, what are we doing differently today because everyone's on a different device? When we phoned everyone on their landlines all those years ago, it was a different thing, yes? You know, the world is a very different place now. I now, if you give me permission, have access to your contacts, your, uh, your contacts, your GPS. I have access to a huge amount of your data, if you give me permission. Now, how much easier to manage the relationship would it be if I actually built that relationship? Yeah. In terms of my ability to connect to you, one of the, uh, 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 I'll just finish with this. Uh, one of the best things you can do is to give your customers an app where they press a button and they end up in the call center. Uh, it's just so much cheaper and so much more efficient. So finally, I just want to say 
this. If you think like a customer and you grade your business like a customer, you're starting on a journey towards having serious customer experience strategy. Thank you for your time. I hope you found that interesting.